Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll see how to configure SSH with a lab demo. The topology is very simple. I've got my router R1 with IP address 10.0.0.1, and I'm going to be accessing it from my PC, PC1 at 10.0.0.10. So let's go on R1 first. And if I do a show IP interface brief here, you can see that the IP address is already configured on there. If I do a show run, you see that I have not configured my Telnet or SSH access at the line level yet. So I'll do that now. So I'll go to global configuration and we'll use a username this time rather than line level security. So I'll say username, I'll have username flakbox with a secret of flakbox1. And then I'll configure telnet access first. So I'll go line VTY 0 to 15. And I'll say login local on there to use the local usernames. Now, if I go on to my PC, if I telnet to 10.0.0.1, I can put in my username of Flakbox and my password of Flakbox1, and I'll try to do it without putting a typo in while I'm talking. There you go, and you can see that I can log in as Flakbox. If I exit back out to the command line on my workstation again, if I try to ssh-l to specify the username, which is flatbox, and to 10.0.0.1, this is going to fail. I can see that the connection is closed because I've enabled Telnet access on the router, but I haven't enabled SSH access yet. So let's do that now. So I'll go back on to R1. The first thing that I need to do is specify a domain name because that's going to be used in the certificate. So I say IP domain name and I'll use flatbox.com for the example. Then I need to generate the certificate. So I say crypto key generate and it's using RSA. The router will ask me what do I want the key length to be. It defaults to 512. Don't accept that. The minimum you can use for SSH is 768. So I will use 768 here. And that is now SSH enabled. If I do a do show run again, you can see that I haven't added anything else to my virtual terminal lines. These control both Telnet and SSH access and the default is that they allow both. So right now, both Telnet and SSH should work. So if I go back to the PC again, and I try to SSH again now, it does prompt me for the password. It doesn't prompt me for the username because that was included in the SSH command. And I can enter my password in there. And now I'm getting into the router with SSH. If I exit out of here and I try Telnet again, you see that Telnet access is still enabled as well. So right now I can get in with either Telnet or with SSH. I don't want that. I want to disable the Telnet access because it's an insecure protocol. The traffic all goes in plain text. So to do that, I will go back onto router R1 again, and I'll go to my virtual terminal lines configuration again, and I'll say transport input. I'll do a question mark here, and you can see I can do all, which enables both SSH and Telnet, that's the default. None will do neither, or I can enable just SSH or just Telnet. So I'll say transport input SSH, and that is going to allow only SSH access. 
Another thing I should do that is best practice is at Global Config, say IPSSH version 2 to only accept the latest version. It's a bit more secure doing this as well. Okay, so that is SSH configured now. If I go back to my PC and I try to Telnet, you see that Telnet is going to fail now because I've disabled Telnet on the router. But if I try to SSH, SSH is working and that still gets me into the router. Okay, so that's how you configure SSH and disable Telnet. That's what's typically going to be done in the real world. Okay, another thing about real world configuration is that you're not going to be using local usernames like you saw there. We're actually going to use an external server to make this more scalable. We'll cover that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.